Hi everyone, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am R. Sintya, Assistant Professor, Department of Food Processing and Preservation Technology, Faculty of Engineering, Avinash Lingam University for Women, Kaimator. Introduction The use of high temperatures to preserve and ensure the safety of foods is based on the effect of microbial destruction. Thermal processing is one of the most widely used unit operations employed in the food industry and is frequently determined as a critical control point. The basic purpose for the thermal processing of foods is to reduce or destroy the microbial activity, reduce or destroy the enzyme activity and to produce physical or chemical changes to make the foods meet a certain quantity standard. Thermal processing takes place by two methods, it could be heating or cooling. Thermal processing. After going through this session, you will be able to understand the uh, various heat treatments used in thermal processing, the protective effect on microorganism, determination of thermal process, the pasteurization process, the aseptic packaging and the different thermal treatments after packaging of food. Heat treatment. Heat sufficient to destroy the microorganisms and food enzymes also generally affects the other properties of foods. The mildest heat treatment that guarantee freedom from pathogens and toxins and produce a desired storage life will be the heat treatment and of choice. Heat energy is transferred by conduction, convection and radiation. In retorts used in canning, conduction and convection are important. To select the safe heat preservation treatment, the following facts are to be considered. First one is time temperature combination that is required to inactivate the most heat resistant pathogens and spoilage organism in a particular food. Heat penetration characteristics in the food including the can or the container of choice if it is packed. The processors must provide the heat treatment which will ensure that the remotest particle of the food in a batch or within a container will receive sufficient heat for a sufficient time to inactivate the most heat resistant pathogen if pasteurization for public health purpose is a goal. Different foods will support the growth of different pathogens and different spoilage organism and so the targets will vary depend on the food to be heated. Even after the time and temperature required to destroy the target organism are known from the thermal death curves under sufficient margin of safety has been calculated. A problem remains how to ensure that every particle of food receives a required heat treatment. This becomes a problem of heat transfer that is heat penetration into and throughout the can or mass of can. If can are heated from the outside as would be the case if they are submerged within a retort, the larger the can the longer it will take to heat the center portion of the can to any desired temperature. Heat penetration. The rate of penetration of heat into the food must be known in order to calculate the thermal process. It is necessary for its preservation. Since every part of the food in the can or other container must receive an adequate heat treatment to prevent the spoilage. Heat penetration from external source to the center of the can may take place by conduction where heat passes from molecule to molecule by convection where heat is transferred by movements of liquids or gases or sometimes by combination of conduction and convection. Conduction is slow in foods and rapid in metals. When both conduction and convection are involved in the heating of foods, they, they may function simultaneously or successively. When solid particles of the food are suspended in a liquid, the particles heat by conduction and the liquid heats by convection. Some food change in consistency during heating and a broken heating curve results. For example, sugar syrup, brines packed in whole grain corn, thick soups and tomato juices. Next one is sterilization. It refers to the complete destruction of microorganism because of the resistance of certain bacterial spores to heat. This frequently requires a treatment of at least 121 degrees Celsius of wet heat for 15 minutes or its equivalent and that every particle of the food must receive this treatment. For example, if a can of food is to be sterilized, then immersing it in 121 degree, pressure, degree Celsius pressure cooker or retort for 15 minutes will not be sufficient because of the relatively slow rate of heat transfer through the food into the can. 
The term sterile means the degree of sterilization at which all pathogenic and toxin forming organism have been destroyed as well as all other type of organism which if pres present could grow in the product and produce spoilage under normal handling and storage condition. Commercially sterilized foods may contain a small number of heat resistant bacterial spores but these will not normally multiply in the food supply. The protective effect on microorganism. Several constituents of the food protect microorganism to various degrees against heat. For example, sugar in high concentration protects the bacterial spores and canned fruit and sugar syrup generally requires a higher temperature or longer time for sterilization than the same fruit without sugar. The starch and protein in foods generally act somewhat like sugar. Fat and oils have a great protective effect on microorganism and their spores by interfering with the penetration of wet heat. Thin flexible pouches allow faster heat penetration into the cold center when compared to the cylindrical shape of can. For example, this means that less heat is required for equivalent lethality in pouches. The heat transfer properties of the container can also affect the processing time. Thus, the metal cans transfer more heat readily than the plastic cans resulting in shorter processing times. If microbes are trapped within fat globules, then moisture can less rapidly penetrate into the cells and heating becomes more likely dry heat. In the same can or food mass, organisms in the liquid phase may be quickly killed while more heating time is required for inactivation of the oil phase flora. The next is, is different temperature time. Different temperature and time combination that are equally effective in microbial destruction can differ greatly in their damaging effect on foods. This is of greatest practical importance in modern thermal processing and is basis for several of the more advanced heat preservation methods. If the temperature time combination required for destruction of Clostridium botulinum in low acid media are taken from the thermal death curves. The following will be found to be equally effective. This is a 0.78 minute at 127 degrees Celsius, minus 10 minutes at 116 degrees Celsius, 1.4 minutes at 124 degrees Celsius, and 36 minute at 110 degrees Celsius, 2.78 minute at 121 degrees Celsius, 150 minutes at 104 degrees Celsius, 5.27 minutes at 118 degrees Celsius. 330 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. This illustrates the simple relationship that the higher the temperature, the less time is required for microbial destruction. This principle holds true for all the type of microbes and their spores as well. On the other hand, foods are not equally resistant to these combination and the more important factor in damaging the color, flavor, texture and nutritional value of the food is long time rather than the high temperature. If we were to inoculate milk with Clostridium botulinum and then heat samples of 330 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius and 10 minutes at 116 degrees Celsius and less than 1 minute at 12 degrees Celsius equals microbial destruction would occur in all the three samples but heat damage to the milk would be enormously different. The next is determination of thermal process. Determination of thermal process is by TDT curves. Heat penetration and cooling curves. The three methods are used to determine the heat process. Graphical method, formula method and nomogram method. Heat resistance. Under that first one is thermal death curves. Heat resistance of microorganism are usually expressed in terms of their thermal death time that is known as TDT. It is defined as a time if the number of organism under specified condition of time and temperature. It is referred to as a logarithmic order of death which means that under constant thermal condition the same percentage of the bacterial population will be destroyed in a given time interval regardless of the size of the surviving population. The concept of the D value which is defined as a time in minutes at a specified temperature which is required to destroy 90 percentage of the organism in the population. Thus the D value or decimal reduction time decreases the surviving population by one log cycle. 
a thermal death time curve for a specific organism in a specific medium of food provides the data on the destruction time for a defined population of that organism at different temperatures. Two terms characterize the thermal death time curves are Z value and F value. Different organism in a given food will have a different Z value which characterize the resistance of the population to change in the temperature. Similarly, a given organism will have different Z value in different foods. Next is graphical method. This method also known as a general method, the first suggested by below and his co-workers for the process calculation is essentially a graphical procedure for integrating the lethal effects of various time and temperature relationship existing at the end point during heating and cooling. Each temperature represented by a point on the heat penetration curve is considered to have a sterilizing or lethal value. This method consists of the thermal death time for the most resistant spoilage organism likely to be encountered as determined in the food being canned. The thermal death time from this curve are converted into lethal rate for the various heating temperature. The lethal rate is a reciprocal of the thermal, thermal death time. The heat penetration curve for the food involved is determined. The product of the lethal rate and the time is equally to lethality. The area beneath the curve may be expressed directly in its unit of lethality. A unit sterilization area is defined as the area on the lethality curve which just represents the complete sterilization. To determine what process time must be employed to give unit lethality, the cooling portion of any given lethality curve may be shifted to the right or the left so as to give an equal area to 1. An area equal to 20 small squares is equal to unit sterilization area. The area under the lethality curve may be measured either by counting the squares or by using a planning meter. The next is pasteurization process. The heating of every particle of milk or milk product to a specific temperature for a specified period of time without allowing recontamination of that milk or milk product during the heat treatment process. Physical and chemical factors that influence the pasteurization process are the following. The time and temperature, the acidity of the product, the air remaining in the containers. The pasteurization temperature and time will vary according to the nature of the product, the initial degree of contamination, the pasteurized product storage condition and its shelf life. In the first category of pasteurization process, it is possible to define the three phases. The heating to a fixed temperature, maintaining this temperature over the established time period, cooling the pasteurized product naturally or forced cooling. The rapid high or flash pasteurization characterized by a pasteurization time in the order of seconds and temperature of about 85 degree to 95 degree Celsius to more. It depends upon the holding time. The typical temperature time combination are as follows. It is 88 degree Celsius for 1 minute, 100 degree Celsius for 12 seconds and 121 degree Celsius for 2 seconds. The methods of pasteurization are basically two. First one is batch pasteurization and continuous method. Batch pasteurization is one of the earliest and simplest method of effectively pasteurizing liquid foods such as milk as to heat the food with the vat in a mild agitation. The continuous method has several advantages over the VAT method, the most important being time and energy saving. For most continuous processing, a high temperature short time pasteurizer is used. The equipments used for pasteurizing are balanced tank. It is a constant level tank, provides a constant supply of milk. It is equipped with a float valve assembly which controls the liquid level nearly constant, ensuring uniform head pressure on the product leaving the tank. The next is regenerator. It has a heating and cooling energy can be saved by using a regenerator which utilizes the heat content of the pasteurized milk to warm the incoming cold milk. It is effi its efficiency may be calculated as follows. The percentage regeneration equal to the temperature increases due to the regenerator divided by the total temperature increase. The next is the holding cube. It must have a slope above 1 fourth feet in the direction of flow to eliminate the air entrapment so nothing flows faster at air pocket restrictions. Next is the indicating thermometer. 
it is considered the most accurate temperature measurement. It is the official temperature to which the safety thermal limit recorder is adjusted. The next is a flow diversion device. It is also called as a flow diversion valve. It is located at the downstream end of the upward sloping holding tube. It is essentially a three-way valve which at temperatures greater than 72 degrees Celsius opens to forward flow. This step requires power. It is more important to note that the FDD operates on the measured temperature not time at the end of the holding period. There are two types of FDD, a single stem and older valve system that has the disadvantage that it cannot be cleaned in place whereas in dual stem it consists of two valves in a series for additional fail safe system. The next one is vacuum breaker. At the pasteurized product discharge is a vacuum breaker which breaks to the atmospheric pressure. It must be located greater than 12 inches above the highest point of raw product in the system. It ensures that nothing downstream is creating suction on pasteurized side. The advantage and limitations are the milk is rendered safe as all the pathogens are destroyed. The bulk of the non-pathogenic bacteria are also destroyed. The useful life of milk is prolonged. There are certain limitations. The first one is pasteurization cannot render dirty milk clean. It reduces the cream line. The chemical composition of the milk is altered. About 5 to 10 percent of albumin is precipitated. About 5 to 10 percent of the calcium and phosphate are precipitated in an insoluble form. The proteins and enzymes being to be affected at 105 degree Fahrenheit. They are completely destroyed at very high temperatures for short period. The next is aseptic packaging. Combining the best attributes of paper, plastic and aluminium, a multi-layer high performance aseptic package locks out light and air which seals in nutrients and flavors and allows the contents to remain unrefrigerated for months. The aseptic pro process which goes hand in hand with the packaging is a major ad advance over traditional canning techniques. Aseptic processing sterilizes a food product by destroying the harmful bacteria and pathogenic microbes through a tightly controlled thermal process. A septic packaging system provides a sterile environment for the product to be introduced into the packaging material. The packaging film barrier properties protects the sterile product from outside contamination. This results in a packaged product that is shelf stable and does not require refrigeration. The next is aseptic processing and packaging. It provides a sterile environment for the product to be introduced into packaging material. The packaging film barrier properties protect the sterile product from outside contamination. This results in a packaged product that is shelf stable and does not require refrigeration because aseptic processing provides more precise temperature treatment to the product. The result is a more repeatable flavor profile aseptic canning. It is possible to shorten the sterilizing times down to seconds and even fraction of a second and for many products this results in a marked improvement in the quality. The benefit of aseptic process are as follows. It gives the food safety, the shelf stability independent of ingredients, ability to process thermally sensitive products, more robust products, thermally process a product independent of package size, more precise control over process, flexible use of containers varying in design and materials, produce a product of improved sensory qualities, product does not require refrigeration resulting in energy saving in storage, improved nutrient retention. The flexible aseptic packaging is cost effective, its added benefits are product safety, less waste material, fewer packaging material, more product per case to reduce shipping cost, maximization of storage space, shelf stability without adding special ingredients, elimination of refrigeration or additives, it has enhanced shelf life. The next is thermal treatment after packaging of food. The foregoing principles very largely determine the designing parameters for heat preservation equipment and commercial practices. The food processor will employ no less than the thermal treatment which gives a necessary degree of microorganism destruction. The thermal destruction of microorganism takes logarithmically 12D process. It involves a heat treatment that will provide a 12 log reduction of clostridium botulinum spores at 121 degrees Celsius. Rate of heat penetration is measured using a thermocouple at the thermal center of the container which is a geometric center and is different for conduction and convection. 
it is denoted by f value which is used as a basis for comparing heat sterilization procedures it represents the total time temperature combination f value is equal to time in minutes the f value is a time needed to reduce microorganism numbers by a multiple of d values f is equal to d of log n 1 minus log n 2 into f not canning is a severe heat treatment which causes changes in flavor texture and nutrients of foods during canning time required to sterilize a food depends on heat resistant of microorganism or enzyme retorting condition ph of the food size of the container heat resistant of microorganism for low ph clostridium botulinum is the most dangerous under anaerobic condition it can produce a exotoxin the next is heating of food in containers it can be of three kinds they are still retort the maximum temperature of a retort is 121 degrees celsius to prevent the food damage near can wall it requires a long cooking time the next is agitating retort it requires a shorter cook time and it creates less damage to foods next is hydrostatic retort it has a continuous flow of cans it uses hydrostatic head to control the pressure it is an agitating system the next one is agitating retort processing time can be markedly reduced by shaking the cans during heating especially with liquid or semi liquid foods agitation in container depends on temperature of the retort temperature difference between the product and the heating medium shape of the container type of the container it may be a metal glass or plastic the pressure considerations whether still or agitating retorts are used the high temperature used for commercial sterilization commonly or obtained from steam under pressure the steam pressures are approximately 10 15 and 20 psi which are required for heating at 116 degrees celsius 121 degrees celsius and 127 degrees celsius let us summarize the whole thing thermal processing of foods as to preserve them over a period of time is a common practice the heat treatments that guarantee freedom from pathogens and toxins and to produce the desired storage life the time temperature combinations are choosed depending upon the product characteristics thus the thermal processing is a common preservation technology in food industries